Uh, welcome to uh, today. I was, I was muted. Oh, I was muted. So shalom, shalom. And uh, I just want to welcome you today and tell you that I love you. And I ask that you would um, uh, turn on your video for this morning service. Make sure your video is on and make sure that you, whatever that you have planned to do during uh, this message to lay it aside until it is over with because this is a very, very important. It is a very, very important message. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. So our video guy is getting me straight. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, let's just open with prayer and Abba Yahuwah, we come to you and we, we love you with all of our hearts, all of our souls, all of our strength. This is what you commanded us. And we adore you. We worship you in the very depths of our hearts. We thank you, Abba, for all that you have done for us already. And we thank you for what you are doing and what you will do for us in the future. And Abba, we pray, we pray in the name of your blessed son, Yahusha, that you will open our ears to hear, open our eyes to see, and open up our hearts to understand what you want to say to us, your people. So we thank you, Father. We thank you and we love you and we'll give you the glory for all that you are doing in us. In Yahusha's name, amen. All right, so I am going to start sharing the screen because as you know, I teach. And so I like to use every resource available to us, to us. Okay, so we're going to teach today on the Shabbat blessing. And that is how it's pronounced in Hebrew, the Shabbat blessing. In other words, the blessings that we get by observing Shabbat. And Shabbat is the Hebrew word for what we in English call Sabbath, but the Shabbat blessing. Okay. All right. So let's begin. Um, and I want to do a disclaimer or a forewarning. You're going to learn some stuff today, and it, it, you're going to learn some truths today. That's going to uh, alarm you. And uh, so uh, just be uh, ready for everything that you hear ready to receive. That's why I always pray for receptive hearts and e hearing ears and he seeing eyes. All right, so let's look at what Shabbat is and its deeper meaning, okay? Shabbat uh, comes from three Hebrew letters. And of course, as you remember from Bible study, if you did not tune into that, then uh, Hebrew reads from right to left. So it reads sheen, bait, and tav. Sheen, bait, and tav. Now I'm going to break that down for us. Um, uh, sheen, bait, and tav. So Shabbat as a whole means to cease. In other words, cease from labor. And when we put the letters bait and sheen together, it equals shuv or return, as in teshuva. Teshuva, return to Yahuwah or return to Yahweh. And the Hebrew letter tav means covenant. So when we put all these together, it means cease from serve our work and return or press to the house of 
covenant, house of the covenant, cease from servile work and return or press to the house of the covenant. So, so we took, we on that, on the Shabbat day, we don't do servile work and we press into the covenant. And we really want to do this because the covenant has protection, protection from us and for our families, our children, our grandchildren, the covenant has, uh, uh, the covenant has uh, provisions it has prosperity. And, and if we really, really look closely at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we know that they had everything. They didn't lack for anything. They were exceedingly prosperous. And so we want to return to the covenant. Hallelujah. All right. So return our press to the covenant and receive completeness, soundness, welfare, peace. This is what Shabbat Shalom gives us. The Shalom or the peace of the Shabbat. Uh, we receive completeness, soundness, welfare, and peace. Uh, and so the completeness and the safety, safety for us. Remember I just said it's protection. It is protection for us and our family because uh, Yahuwah uh, miraculously delivered even when the odds were against them, our ancestors from their enemies. And so we want to be, a, we want to enter into this, enter back, return to the covenant and it, it and because there's safety there. And then there's soundness in our body. What does that mean? If we are healthy, our bodies are sound, not weak. We are healthy. We have healthy bodies. And I want that. I don't know if you want it, but I really want it. And then uh, 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 the Shabbat Shalom means welfare and help mean everything is going well with her with us not that we are going to uh, have uh, not have be attacked by our enemies but we come out victorious we always try up in the messiah yahusha so welfare and then there's help there's a difference in healing and just walking in help. Yes, we want to be healed, but there is a, a higher level of that, which means that we walk in help. And then there is prosperity. Well, what is prosperity? Prosperity is having more than enough. How many of you would love to have more than enough? That is prosperity. When uh, the, the most high pours into our finances that is more than enough so that, that that's a blessing of the shabbat and also peace and quiet and tranquility and contentment we all can use a little bit of that peace quiet peace and quiet tranquility and contentment and peace which is friendship with of human relationships and peace with the most high, especially when we return, when we teshuva in covenant relationship. So there is another meaning of Shabbat, Shalom. It is, it is uh, getting rid of the chaos in our lives, getting shed of the chaos in our lives. And there might be somebody that's listening to me now that wants to get rid of the chaos that's going on, the attack, and that don't seem like anything is working right. So there is a blessing in the Shabbat. There is shalom in the Shabbat. Okay, now, Yahuwah commanded us to observe the Shabbat. He commanded us to observe the Shabbat. So I'm just going to get the, the faces. Okay. All right. So in Exodus 28 through 11, he commanded us. That's one of the 10 commandments. And it's one of the 10, they call it the 10 words in Hebrew, in ancient Hebrew. It was called the 10 words written on two tablets. 
And he commanded us, remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all of your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah, your Elohim, in it you shall not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. And I know this might be uh, difficult for those who are uh, working on Saturdays. So this might be a little difficult, but if you pray, the most high will, will fix it for you. And when he says, hallow, hallow is to consecrate, to sanctify, to prepare, to dedicate, to be hallowed, to be holy, be sanctified and to be separate. So this is how our father, our Abba, Yahuwah, Abba Yah, uh, uh, did with the seventh day. He hallowed it. It is a consecrated day. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, so, Shabbat, the Shabbat shows how we are separated from all other peoples. And we already know that we are different just because every other pe people group attacks us. Uh, I don't care who you name. There is an inner kind of hatred. And, I'm, and that's not everybody. There's an inner hatred that they have for us because of who we are. They don't understand it because it comes from the enemy. It comes directly un, uh, from the enemy. So keeping the Shabbat is a perpetual sign of the covenant that we are Yahuwah's covenant people. Let's look at Exodus 30 and 12 through 13. And it says, and, and Yahuwah spake unto Moses saying, speak, thou also unto the children of Israel saying, verily my Shabbat you shall keep for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am Yahuwah who doth sanctify you. We are a separate and sanctified people. But we got to remember that our ancestors turned wholly away from Yahuwah and his commands. And we are still suffering from it today. Exodus 31 and 26, uh, 31 and 16, excuse me. It says, wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat to observe the Shabbat throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. And see, this is what happened. They stopped observing the Shabbat. That is why Abba Yah divorced them, divorced us. He divorced us and left us to the plans and schemes of the enemy. And he left us to the promises that he spoke on Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, that we will be cursed. All of the things you can read Deuteronomy 15, 68, everything in that curse has happened to us, including the last verse. And you shall return to Egypt in ships. Now, no other people group has been enslaved through shipping, through uh, ships. No other people group, no other one. So uh, our ancestors broke the covenant. They broke it. And so we want to, uh, so we, I want to explain some more. So let me move on. The Shabbat is a gift from Yahuwah. 
The Shabbat was a gift to the children of Israel because they were cruelly treated in Egypt, being commanded to work relentlessly seven days a week. In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15, the Most High says, keep the Shabbat day to sanctify it as Yahuwah thy Elohim hath commanded thee. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah thy Elohim. In it you shall not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your ox, nor your ass, nor any of the, your cattle, nor the stranger that is within your gates, that your that your manservant and your maidservant may rest as well as you. And remember that you were a servant in the land of Egypt and that Yahuwah thy Elohim brought you out thence from with a, uh, through a mighty hand by an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yahuwah your Elohim commanded you to keep the Shabbat. And we were in the same circumstances from, uh, from uh, 1490, from 1490, I think it is, 1419 rather, to uh, eight, it really wasn't 1865 because, uh, no, 1619, excuse me, to uh, 18, uh, 65, when the uh, proclamation was given to free the slaves. But so many of them were still kept. So many of our ancestors were still kept in slavery. We need to really know our history before we can understand and become awakened. Okay, so, so uh, they work seven days a week. I mean, some of them, I, I, I was listening to a an audio recording about a uh, a slave, Hebrew slave, uh, and they asked them to tell about the conditions of slavery. And they were worked so hard. They worked all day and all night. They were whipped. He said they were whipped and we never got much chance to rest. So they were worked really, really hard. So this is why the Shabbat is a gift from Yahuwah. All right, so let's look at the blessings of Jacob, our forefather. Isaiah 58, 13 through 14. Remember, I've always said that the Bible is our history book. It's written about us and it's written to us. Isaiah 58, 13 and 14. If you turn away your foot from the Shabbat, from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the Shabbat a delight. I call it a delight because it is a guilt-free day of doing absolutely nothing. The holy of Yahuwah, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then shall you delight yourself in Yahuwah, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So what we're going to, so when we turn back to Shuvah, we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to be fed with the heritage of Jacob and Jacob was rich. All of his sons were rich until after they went into slavery, after they went into Egypt and Joseph, their younger brother had died for he had become king over Egypt and they were rich. They got the best of everything in, in Goshen, in the land of Goshen. They got the best land, the best pastures, they were, they were, they were really, really uh, 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 walking and existing in the heritage of Jacob. 
all right? And also, this is so, this is, if nothing else got your attention, this should get your attention. Yahusha or Yahshua heal on the Shabbat. Every time it recounts that he healed, it's always on Yah's holy day. Let's look at Matthew 12, 9 through 13. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man who had his hand withered. And they asked him saying, is it lawful to heal on the Shabbat days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, what man? He, I know he was perplexed. What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Shabbat day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Shabbat days. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it forth. And when he stretched it forth, it was restored whole, like as the other. All right. In Mark, and, and, and uh, we know that was on the Shabbat day because that is when they worshiped in the synagogue, okay? And they were talking about Shabbat, the Shabbat days, all right? Mark 1, 21 through 28, and they came to Capernaum and straightway on the Shabbat day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you? You, you, Yeshua of Nazareth, aren't you come to destroy us? I know you, who you are, the Holy One, of Yah, and Yeshua rebuked him, saying, hold your peace and come out of him. In other words, he said, shut up and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits. And they do. They do what he commands them to do. So this was another Shabbat healing. He, he picked the Shabbat day to heal his people. Luke 4, 38 through 40. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Shimon's house. And Shimon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. And immediately she rose and ministered unto them. So that was the Shabbat. Now let's look at verse 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers of various diseases, all diseases, brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, thou art Christ, the son of of Elohim, and he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak. He told them to shut up, mm -hmm. for they knew that he was the Messiah. He was the Christ. He was the anointed one. Let's move on to uh, Luke 13. And he was teaching, this is one of my favorite scriptures of healing that he did, and the one I'm going to get to next. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Shabbat. 
And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. In other words, she was bowed down where she, her body doubled. And when Yeshua saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, woman, thou art loose Mama. from your infirmity. And he laid his hand on her and immediately she was made straight yes. and glorified Yah. See, see what happened? He healed on the Shabbat. That's a holy, sanctified, set apart day. Our enemies, excuse the typo, and those who hate us hate Shabbat observance. They actually hate Shabbat observances. And I know back when I was growing up, and I'm sure some of you remember that uh, the ones who did uh, observe the Shabbat, they were persecuted. They were talked about. And they were deemed uh, uh, not like us Christians, quote, unquote. And, and so, uh, but they were really following the commands of what Yahuwah told them to do. Listen, and here we are continuing that. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Yeshua had healed on the Shabbat day. See? The enemy hates Shabbat and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore, come and be healed and not on the Shabbat day. Yahuwah then, uh, Yahusha then answered him and said, you hypocrite, do not each one of you on the Shabbat loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead them away to watering and ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan had bound lo these 18 years be loose from the bond on, from this bond on the Shabbat day now I'll put a pen in this because there's a lot to unpack with just this scripture because we should know from this scripture, where do our infirmities come from? From where? From Satan. And she was bound with, by him for 18 years. Where does every infirmity come to into our bodies? It's because of Satan. His Hebrew name is Hasatan. And, and Yahshua, see, that's why he was, that's why these Pharisees, the synagogue rulers and all of that, hate Shabbat. Verse 17, and when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. And all people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Healing comes on the Shabbat. We can take that to the bank, that healing comes on the Shabbat because it's sanctified and blessed and is Yahusha's, Yahuwah's holy day. Luke 14, 14th verse. And it came to pass as he went out into the, went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Shabbat day that they watched him. And Yeshua answering spake unto the lawyers and the Pharisees saying, see, he caught them before they, while they were thinking it and they, before they said something, is it lawful to heal on the Shabbat day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And he answered them saying, which of you, again, he's asking the same question because they didn't get it. Which of you shall have an ass or ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Shabbat day? And they could not answer him 
again to these things. No. They didn't have anything to say because it, it, because it, it made them seem like they loved their animals more than love their brothers and sisters, their fellow Hebrews. Mm -hmm. and, and we have that today. We have a people group, the Gentiles, that treat their dogs better than they treat Hebrew Israelites. Mm -hmm. So we still have that going on. And it was, it was in fact, the Gentiles that were ruling in the synagogue in Yeshua's day mm -hmm. because the Roman government had replaced the priests of the Hebrews with these Roman, uh, Roman officials. Mm -hmm. So that's still going on. All right, John 5, one of my favorites. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, mm -hmm. which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda having five porches. In these, let a great multitude of impotent folk, mm. of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Mm -hmm. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Yes. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirm infirmity. Remember who puts people in, uh, who puts infirmities on people? And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. When Yahshua saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will you be made whole? Now, I know we often talk about this man and we kind of judge him because if he had been there 38 years, he should have just fell in the pool. But see, we don't know the circumstances, uh, his, his circumstances. And, and it might be that every other uh, infirmity was healed from all of the others when the water was stirred. But let me tell you something. The living water. Mm came up to this man, the living water. Yahshua came up to this man who had been in this condition for 38 years. Yes. And the impotent man asked him, will you be made whole? Will you be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man. When the waters, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, now he's trying another step down before me. Yeshua said unto him, the living water, rise, take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. That's got me excited. The living water walked up to that pool. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day now was the Shabbat. Mm. On the same day was the Shabbat. Now, don't you think, if you read even further, I didn't put the rest of the account, but don't you think that the Pharisees didn't try to chastise him and berate him because he was carrying his bed on the Shabbat? John 9, and as Yahushua passed by Yeshua, Passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, we got to really note that the sins of the parents can cause things to come upon the children. So they asked him, who did sin, uh, this man or the parents? And Yeshua answered, he didn't argue with them. He didn't say no, a, a sickness or infirmity comes down to the children because he knew that uh, curses of sickness come down from the parents. And Yeshua asked, neither, uh, uh, answer, neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but 
that the works of Yah should be made manifest in him. And then he told him, he taught him, he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. So he says, I'm going to work the works of my father that sent me while it is yet day. In other words, that's a metaphor while I can. It's day now. While I can. The, this is the day of your deliverance and your healing and, and all of the other things that came with me. When I announced in Luke 4, the spirit of Elohim is upon me, Yahuwah Elohim. And I've come to preach the gospel to the poor, to open blinded eyes, to set at liberty those who are captured and so forth and so on. So he said, I got to work. I have to work. And as long as I am in the world, it's day. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So he says, it's day now. So I'm going to work. While I can, hallelujah, that's, that's something to shout about. Uh, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Shiloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He's like him. But he said, I'm he. Therefore said they unto him, how were your eyes open? He answered and said, a man that is called Yahshua made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Shiloh and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I don't know. In, in, in our modern vernacular, they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Shabbat day when Yahshua made the clay and opened his eyes. It was the Shabbat day. Now, why was the Shabbat changed? from Saturday to Sunday. And it was changed in 300, around 300 common era or AD or whatever. They call it common era now. Uh, it was to worship the sun God on the day that was named after it. Now here is a depiction of the sun God that the Greeks worship that the Greeks and the Romans worship. Now, I don't know his name. I know he's called by several other names, but he is called the sun God. And that's why they changed it to worshiping on sun day, on sun day. Who changed the day of worship? The Catholic church changed it. All Protestant religions, where you're Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, whether you are a uh, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, all, whether you're Jehovah's Witnesses, all of them are under the Catholic Church, which is called the Mother Church. And I want right now to uh, show you a video clip of uh, the Pope confessing that the Catholic Church changed the Shabbat day from Saturday to Sunday. That's why I said you need your uh, video turned on. Okay, okay here we are, Mom. 
expand the screen. He says, you have to know something that I've been keeping secret for a long time, okay? Now I'm gonna stop it if it, if it gets too quick so you can read it. Oh, I'll read it. Very simple. 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 Two rules. We must take the Bible seriously and make the Bible its own interpreter. Just like the sky. Let me just turn it down. We can't understand what he's saying. Now, what is happening here is very, very prophetic. Tony Palmer, he knows what I am talking about. I found out only recently that the Bible is very accurate regarding this meeting to unite on shalom or peace. Yes, peace and safety. That's what the Shabbat is. But truthfully, it says after that, then sudden destruction. Sudden because we are living in the end time and are living like Yahshua Hamashiach isn't coming back. But that is what the spirit says. We are lukewarm and think we are saved when we are not. But actually we are blind, wretched, naked, I'm really sad about what is happening even within my own life and within our stiff neck suburbs. So really your, wait a minute, they're going too fast. Let me push it back. So really our family should, our family should know They're going too fast. So hold on. Let me make sure we get everything. Okay. So really our family should not follow me or look, see. Hold on, I'm gonna stop it. Let's see. Do not follow me or look up to me anymore. Otherwise, you and your family, see it's going too fast. Okay, so Martin J is slowing it down. He said that they kiss him and the parents should know better. Even kids in the family kiss me and the parents should know better. They really need to be told the truth about me. It is so wrong. This is the current Pope. I am ashamed to tell you this, but I have secret agenda to deceive you. Yes, it looks good to unite people in a one world religion. That way I control them better. And have you all. This is the current Pope, you all. Worship me and have you all worship me. And in doing this, you will really receive the mark of the beast. You don't want that, really. The only way you can avoid it is firstly is to know who Yahuwah really is. Yes. You also need to study Yah's word deeply, especially the book of Revelation. And Daniel. It reveals who Yah's true church and also shows who Satan's church really is. This shocked me. This shocked me, family. 
And if you know the real difference, it's impossible to be deceived. If someone came to you and told you go to that church because the Holy Spirit is there, you say to them, I will only go if you keep Yah's law, especially the Shabbat. I'm going to say it again. I will only go if you keep Yah's law, especially Shabbat, Saturday. Not Sunday. Get it right. And that person will say, what is wrong with going to church on Sunday? It doesn't really matter what day you worship, y'all. You are too extreme. That's what we used to think. And they will make fun of you and call you an extremist. They are full of garbage, silliness, and hypocrisy. This is the Pope, y'all. You see, we, the leaders in the Catholic Church, really change y'all's laws big time. We got rid of the second law, changed the fourth law, and then we divided the tent into two. So it would actually look like there is 10 commandments still, but not really. This is a secret we have been keeping for a long time, yet not many people have realized this. You have all been deceived by this silly and crafty deception of ours. Put your hand on your heart and say, I have really been deceived. So you now worship idols and pray to Mary, but she is dead. The idols is the white, blue-eyed, blonde, long-haired Jesus. It's time to stop this nonsense. He was not blue eyed, was not, did not have long straight hair. I say this really simply, so don't be offended. But I am man of sin mentioned in the Bible. In other words, the man of lawlessness. And the Bible calls the Catholic Church the mother of harlots. It is shocking, I know. But what is even more shocking? It's about most Protestants. That's the Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, Seventh-day Adventist, all of them. Apostate Protestants. That's what Christ calls them. But Yah's word refers them as daughters of the harlot. Because they all are eventually going to join their mother. And together we will. Well. Receive the mark of the beast, which is the Sunday law. And those who still choose to keep the Saturday Shabbat will be hunted like dogs. 
It's cruel, I know, but I feel more sad for you who choose to keep Sunday because y'all will hunt you. And only in the second resurrection, you will realize hmm, you were so stupid, but it will be too late. And you will say, but yeah, I did not know. And he will say, you should have known. I made it clear in my word, especially revelation. I gave you so many clues and sent preachers, but you had itchy ears. Your ears were so itchy that you listened to Joyce Meyer and Joel Osteen. He really said that. <laughs> and think that you could be a Christian and watch The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. I don't know what that means. Not only that, but also Game of Thrones, The Dance of Dragons, not to mention Lego Movie 2, that was recently released. So he's saying that was done by, it's demonic. Those movies are demonic. So we have some repenting. No, no, you cannot be a double-minded Christian. You can only serve one master. Soon you will have to decide because my wound is about to be healed. You must put away all your sins and repent to Shuva. Otherwise, you will not be ready. It's time to wake up. That's what we've been preaching and teaching. It's time to wake up. Thank you. That's what we have been preaching and teaching. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to get um, get my lesson. I'm just about finished um, right here. Okay. So who changed the day of the Sabbath? Shabbat. The Catholic Church. And he also said, he also said that I am going to receive the mark of the beast. I know that was really heavy, my beloved, but, um, but we have to know the truth and then we'll be free. Leviticus 23 and 3, he has told us, Yahuwah commanded us to gather together on the Shabbat, and he has never changed it. Leviticus 23 and 3, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Shabbat of Yahuwah in all your dwellings, in all your dwellings. So Shabbat is a day that Yahuwah has hollowed and set aside unto himself, but he set aside it for us. Exodus 16 and 23, and he said to them, this is that which Yahuwah has said, tomorrow is the rest of the holy Shabbat unto Yahuwah. Yahshua said that the Shabbat was made for man, the Shua, the son. That's Yahshua said that the Shabbat was made for a man and not man for the Shabbat. And Mark 2, 27, he said unto them, the Shabbat was made for man and not man for the Shabbat. Therefore, the son of man is Lord or Yah also of the Shabbat. So now we see, we have brought it out we have been trying to educate everyone to some of the uh, uh, Hebrew faith. And so uh, it's time to turn from what, what we have been doing. This, uh, this uh, COVID has given us a reset button. 
okay? So the blessings of the Shabbat, again, is to cease from servile work and return oppressed to the house of the covenant. The covenant was the 10 commands and all of the rest. There was a wedding there. We have many, many benefits in returning to the covenant. Let's return oppressed to the covenant. Uh, and receive completeness, soundness, welfare, and peace. Am I sharing this? Uh, I'm not. But anyway, completeness, safety, soundness, and body, welfare, health, prosperity, peace, quiet, tranquility, contentment, peace, friendship of human relationship with Yah and especially in covenant relationships. Now, I wanna just add, I wanna just add, uh, am I still recording? I am? Okay. I just wanna add um, that the Most High is calling us to repentance because it was in the word. The Most High is calling us to repentance because it was in his word. Now I'm going to put the link uh, in the recording down below. Um, I'm going to put the link so that you can click on the link and see what this current, I don't even know what his name is, current Pope, Catholic Pope has said. And he's also said that about Protestants because they consider every Protestant religion under them. They are the mother church. That's where Christianity began. Then they branched off, but they didn't, they didn't go back to Yah's original commandments and so forth and so on. So, but it's, it's, it's it, you know, we have a loving father. We have a loving father. And if we do teshuva, in other words, to repent and turn back, to Yahuwah or Yah, turn back to him and keep all his commands. Because we've turned away, we have, we have suffered so much because of our ancestors. And when I say we, I'm talking about us and them. And we have listened to the teaching of the Gentile. We have listened to them. We have been taught by them. Remember he said, Joyce Meyer, uh, uh, the one out in Houston, Texas, I forget Joel his Green. name. Yeah, uh, what name, who? Joel. Yeah, Joe Olsten. But we listen to all of them. I read, uh, I read every book that Kenneth Hagin wrote because I was hungry to know. I read books of, uh, that, uh, just about every book that Kenneth Copeland, believe it or not, and Gloria wrote, I read books. I read books that Joyce Meyer, I had a bunch of books from Joyce Meyer. We have been deceived like this Pope said. And so, but it's not too late. Yah is not angry because he poured out his anger on his son, Yahshua. He poured that anger out on him while he was hanging on that tree because he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. That's lawlessness. This is Isaiah 53 and 5. He was chastised, beaten until you could see his internal organs, beaten, flesh ripped off his back. He was chastised for our shalom. And with his stripes, we are healed. So I am, I am so convinced that we haven't been healed because we haven't obeyed the commands. And the Shabbat is a holy set apart day. And if that's when Yeshua healed, when he walked the earth, that's when he's going to heal when we pray to him for healing. That's when he's going to heal. So all we need to do is 
turn to the covenant and receive the favor of Yah, the unmerited favor of the Most High. Hallelujah. I know I, I'm not apologizing for the shock that you may have received with this message because the truth shocks you sometimes. Uh, trauma shocks you. And so, you know, I'm telling you this because we need to know the truth and we need to know how much we have been deceived. There is so much other that we need to learn. So tune in for Bible study and tune in for our worship service because all of this is that, see, see, we've been praying for healing, praying for prosperity and all of that when it was there all the time for health and soundness and all of that, we've been praying for it. But it was there all the time by following his commands, by following his commands. So let's just pray and let's just repent. Let us pray and repent. Wonderful, wonderful, Abba, Yahuwah. We love you and we come to you in humility and we come to you in sorrow for not following, for believing what we've been taught and not following your word, your commands. So Abba, we're sorry. Our hearts are broken over the iniquity that was in our hearts. Please forgive us. Please wash us, cleanse us with the atoning blood of your beloved son, Yahusha, Yahshua. And because he is our great high priest, he died brutally for our sins. Please forgive us. Accept the atonement of his blood for the forgiveness of our sins and our transgressions and for the cleansing and forgiveness of our iniquity, our lawlessness. Forgive and receive us back into your holy covenant. Receive us so that we can ride on the high places of Jacob so that we can be healed by our master, Yahusha, our great high priest. We can have soundness and we can grow in increase in prosperity and all of the wonderful blessings of the Shabbat. We thank you so much and we love you. And Father, I pray that you will give those who are listening, the assurance as they repent from their hearts, as we all repent, that they are loved by you because you poured out your wrath on your only begotten son. Thank you, Father. We love you and we give you glory in Yeshua's mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 All right. I am done. Uh, but we still want to pray. If you have specific requests, we want to pray. So just put your request into the chat. Into the chat. If you have a request. Abba. Thank you for this word. And I ask that you would touch everyone's heart who is listening. I ask that you would change them, conform them into the image of your chosen ones, who you want us to be so that you can bless us. Thank you, Abba. 
Whatever need their needs are, I ask that you meet it because you are so good, not because of our own goodness, but because of your tender mercies and your loving kindness and your compassion. Meet their needs because you love them. We ask in Yeshua's name, amen. And now the parting blessing. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May, may Yahuwah cause his face to shine upon you. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance against you. Be gracious, be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance against you, uh, a countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Go, my beloved family. In the shalom of Yahuwah, your only God, your only Elohim. All right. Hallelujah. And I am out. Love you all. Love you all. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>